So today, we, yesterday we have discussed on the simple outbound flow and we have seen how a simple outbound delivery will be transferred and how we will be executing that. Now, the same way, we will also try to understand how we will be having okay the outbound flow, I mean like with the complex scenarios. So now when we are trying to make a complex outbound scenario so what kind of the things that we would be required and what we would be reconfiguring it ideally however now we will be using the same concept of the storage process which is of the outbound one like ideally we will be talking about ob01 and ob02 and ob03 same it okay first let's try to understand here here you can see as per the diagram, these are the two different activity areas, which is of T D O one and double O 20, where we have to pick the products, whether it could be a pallets or whether it could be any kind of a pallets uh, products that they would be required that needs to be picked. But ideally when they are being getting picked initially, they will be placed in one pick handling unit. Ideally, peak handling unit is nothing but a kind of a tote or maybe a kind of a traveling one that we would be taking it ahead. And from that particular peak HU, we will move it to your pack workstation. So where we would be requiring it packing. And from that particular packing, we will move in it to the loading station. And from the loading, I mean like the staging, I'm sorry. And from the staging, we will do the loading. So ideally, we do have a different four different steps that we can see here. One is your picking, the other one is your packing, and the other one is your staging, the other one is your loading. So altogether, we do have a four different steps that would be required in order to put the products into your transport unit vehicle. And now, when we are performing this ideally, as I said, because of the complex one, we would be required a certain steps ideally. What are the certain steps indeed? Like probably we will be requiring a storage process. If you can recap, in the inbound, we have used <clears throat> and uh, storage steps also, like IV01 and IV02 and IV03, and as well as VS01. So all these things are a certain steps that we have used in order to have it. The same way, when we are trying to perform the outbound also, we also required a certain steps as well, like a storage process would be required, okay? And that particular storage process, whatever we are trying to pick it up, we will try to have it by using these steps. So ideally, but we do have a certain steps that would be required. So now, Let's uh, talk about our uh, warehouse as well. So in the inbound, we have this IBU 123, which is for the inbound, and how your warehouse process type has got determined. Anyone? Uh, maybe you can just unmute and you can just talk. How your uh, warehouse process type, which is of a custom one that we have defined, that was triggered. How does it happen? Any idea? And because you already seen that, right? Guys? Anybody? Process type is assigned to the delivery, uh, inbound delivery. Okay, but the warehouse, how the custom warehouse process type was determined? That is what I'm trying to ask here because we have defined something called as a control indicator, if you remember that, like a certain control indicator, like in our inbound, we have defined it something like D1 or D4, I'm not sure, something we have defined. And that particular control indicator, we have assigned it in the product master, if I'm not wrong, right? For, for instance, uh, let's check one of the product. Got. So in this particular warehouse data, what we have done here, 
we have maintained a control indicator here, process type determination indicator, right? So this particular process type determination indicator, based on this, what happened? Your warehouse process type, I mean, like the whole concept, what we are trying to understand from the inbound is, we do define a certain storage process in the inbound, right? Because how it has been differentiated from the inbound and the outbound, I'm trying to make it clear. This particular one, whatever we have defined, the storage process has been assigned to your WPT, right? Because in your warehouse process type of something like whatever we have defined, that has been assigned, uh, what is the warehouse process type we have defined for our uh, inbound? Cross process settings, warehouse task. We have defined DECL, right? The custom warehouse process type. And in that warehouse process type, we have assigned a storage process, right? So in our DECL, we have assigned our INB2. Right, and this INB2 are having the steps of IB01 followed by IB02 and VA01 and then followed by IB03. Right, so the, in order to trigger your storage process, the, the first thing is the warehouse process type needs to be determined in your inbound scenarios for the complex one. And this warehouse process type was assigned to a process type determination indicator which is of D1 or D4, and that we would have assigned it in your product master, right? So that's how you have your entire inbound scenario, which got triggered. But the same way in the outbound, that is not the case. We do have a warehouse process type of 2010, right? And now we will define the steps because as we are doing a process-oriented storage control, we will define a steps of storage process of OB01, OB02, and OB03. Like for example, we will make it as something like uh, OUT3, something we will define it. Where the steps includes OB01 for your picking, which is a standard step, okay? And OB02 for your packing, and OB03 for your staging. We also have another one also, which is OB04, which we will have it for your loading, okay? So these are all the steps, but loading will be in part of your yard management and your transportation unit vehicle, which is in the next session, we'll do that. However, how your warehouse process type or how your storage process needs to be determined in case of your outbound. So here in the outbound cases, we will not assign the storage process to your warehouse process types, okay? As being in the outbound one, we have a concept called as a warehouse order creation rule. So that's the main trigger point, okay? So we have warehouse order creation rule. This warehouse order creation rule, whatever we have it, that will help out, okay, in order to trigger your storage process, okay? So what happens here and how does that get triggered? For example, let's go back to this picture, okay? When we are trying to pick a products, for instance, when we try to have uh, both, for example, okay, we have segregated in your warehouse in such a way that the activity area of TD01 and activity area of 0020, okay? So like in that case, what happens? We have, and we also know what is an activity areas, which we have defined earlier. So for